uh, I'm standing amongst a, an embarrassment of riches here, uh, 126 guitars that belong to David Gilmore from his collection. And that represents, um, first and foremost, probably the deepest association with his performance career um, from one of the earliest instruments he ever purchased, uh, a 1969 Fender Stratocaster, uh, to instruments that are more recent uh, from the last 10 years. The values, pre-sale estimates range anywhere between $300 to $150,000. And there are three instruments that uh, carry the highest estimates. It is the Black Strat, estimated at $100 to $150,000. It is an extremely rare um, uh, Gretsch White Penguin, again, estimated at $100,000 to $150,000. And it's the White Strat 0001, um, which also carries an estimate of $100 to $150,000 thousand dollars and those are sort of the the great jewels of the sale David Gilmore purchased the Black Strat at Manny's um, Music in New York in 1970 and it quickly became his primary guitar. Um, it was instrumental in the recording of Dark Side of the Moon, Pink Floyd's masterpiece album. And for the follow-up albums, uh, Wish You Were Here, Animals and The Wall, which really are the sort of four corners, cornerstones of uh, the, the classic era Pink Floyd. These two instruments were the instruments that laid down both the rhythm track and the solo for another Brick in the Wall Part 2, which, which we all know. Um, he used the Stratocaster to, to, to lay down this terrific rhythm, uh, almost like Jimmy Nolan and James Brown's uh, guitarist. And then on top of that, he played the lead solo on the Les Paul, uh, which gives it this sort of wonderful rich timbre. He's selling it because he wants to fulfill this philanthropic mission. Um, he's a great believer in, uh, in, in, in giving away these riches, and he wants to help out uh, uh, both world hunger and homelessness. Those are two very uh, deep passions for him. He's excited about the auction. Um, I had a great opportunity to spend a day with him and interview him, talk about these instruments. Uh, and he. He views them simply as tools of the trade, um, especially his performance instruments. Um, they're, he doesn't want to ever think of them as precious. He wants them to go into other players' hands and to continue to make music, hopefully.